coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fun, you Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Off the play fake. Here's Taylor. Nowhere to get away. And down he goes. Taylor is sacked. Joey Bosa in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. You've called plenty of games in your career. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I do, and I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Well, it's third and long, and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively. But this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag. They're going to keep chucking it. And this time, it results in an interception. No run. This is Melvin Gordon. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Second down, Rivers. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Did a good game catch the ball at the backfield a week ago. And they're going to try and involve him in that way in this game as well. But you can tell scouting is taking over. They're making it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, defensively, they told us, hey, we've got to take him out of the passing game, limited to just short runs, because he can really impact this offense. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Gordon. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find the matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. Throw left side complete. That's Gordon. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. On second down, Taylor. Looking left side of his game, man. It's Gordon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. Now, look, that wasn't a huge game, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And fights him off. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he slides to avoid the hit. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. 
Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier in this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. He kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Second and ten, it's Taylor again. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Denzel Perryman in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. They were in the top five in sacks in the league coming into this one. That's their third one in this game. Obviously, pass rush has been a strength of this team all year long. And apparently, they're not satisfied with top five. They want to climb that ladder. Yeah, I think it goes back to their offseason. They decided to make it a priority, and it's working out. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, that little chance of winning this one. And this is just outside the right upright. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. And it's a first down and more for Gordon. And finally taken down at the 35-yard line. 18 big yards on that one and a Charger first. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said right down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. But they face a second and long to start things out. They'll try to throw here. Rivers. This is Gordon on the dump off. He lost two there. And it's third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, that's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out. And he's going to be hit taken down back right around the 48 yard line miles garrett able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play and it'll be fourth down the number one pick a season ago proving his worth seven sacks in 11 games as a rookie didn't play the full year due to some injuries but he's going to be the face of the franchise the Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can offense. they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Well, they've already allowed three sacks in this first half. Now a holding penalty. So I think drastic measures had to be taken, right? The regular way was not working. He was getting hit almost every snap. It felt like they had to try and keep him up right. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Taylor will throw over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A good play there is the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. 
and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's Johnson. Cam able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Slow, slow, slow. Now Taylor on first down. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Jamie Meter able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Taylor. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A gain of 32 that time. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. Flush to his right. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, third down here. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. On third down, Taylor forced out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. A first carry for a former 49er and also a former Buckeye. It's Carlos Hyde. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make the play himself as we just saw there that's a big day a reminder once we hit halftime as we do all season we'll send it down to jonathan coachman in orlando he'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the nfl and the chargers rush is gonna get there down he goes jamie meter in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt the rip. Taylor hit. He lost the football. And now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And Gonzalez puts this one through. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. 
Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Going underneath for Gordon. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. On third down, Rivers. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll Hurry mark up. him down at the 39. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. A first down throw here for Rivers. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. A very solid gain of 27. A nice little completion there by Philip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday. Fifth grade, Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Again, it's Rivers. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Rivers again. Got a man, it's Allen for the Charger touchdown. Keenan Allen in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chargers are able to strike for six. Sturgis adds the PAT. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. And just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. We have hit. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. Well, he thought about coming out, but instead he does go down to a knee, and he'll bring the football out to the 25. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Gordon. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Tough first half for him. Unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Now a second down throw for Rivers. And right side, Henry's got it. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Well, they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. 
I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. Let's see if they can get the latter 50%. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play to lost yardage. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A couple of recent pickups. Taylor finding Landry for the Cleveland first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Taylor, flushed out right, and incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free, and brings up third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues, these receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls, they've got to go up with the defender, and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. They'll roll him out right, he may try and run for this. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. They're going on fourth down. It's Taylor. Steps away to his left. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. On first down, it's Taylor. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. He got 29 yards that time. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Taylor now 8 of 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. Now Taylor, his pass caught at the 4. And he'll be brought down here at the 3-yard line. A good pick up there, 8 yards on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, it got outside. And he'll score! Touchdown, Brown! Tyrod Taylor with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. And his kick is right through. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and get the ground game going. Here's Gordon, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. They lost four there, and it's third down. 
sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Rivers. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Williams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 14 yards is the pickup there and a Charger first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed. Trying to force it to Allen and it's intercepted. Picked off here, the 32. And the return stops just a little bit shy of midfield at the 48-yard line. Allen, the intended receiver. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Taylor. Over the middle complete. That's Gordon. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice gain. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. He'll be kind of looking to erase the first part of this third quarter from his memory partner. I think he, above all, was upset that they actually got to halftime. Because you saw him in the first half. He yeah. was really sharp. And they had the lead. Had the lead. Everything was going well. And you know you keep... There goes Melvin Gordon. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 63 yards. So what's the old expression that quarterbacks like to use when they decide to throw the football? And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Rivers on first down. And caught right side. Green. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. He was looking for Travis Benjamin that time. And that'll bring up second down. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. The fourth quarter, maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Well, you know me pretty well now. You know what I want to do after that completed pass. Fourth down, down by three. What do I want to do here? Well, you want to go for it. You might be tempted. I think they need to kick it. Yeah, someone might have to overrule me. Get the kicker out there, tie this game up. 
I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. There goes Duke Johnson. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Duke Johnson, his fourth touchdown of the year. And the Browns have moved out in front. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now Austin Eckler on the return. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at about the 32. Rivers now, the throw on first down. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. Sets up the screen to Gordon. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. A good return there. 17 yards. And the Browns will take over. First and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. Slow, slow, slow. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. To the right side and complete to Njoku. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to thank the guys on D. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensive. Taylor, hit. he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 27. Ready, 380. From the gun, Rivers. Over the middle, he's got Tyrell Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
Give him 15 yards on that one. Add a charger first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height... Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A big play there for L.A. 49 yards. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. Ready, ready. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. And give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Now the Chargers hustling, trying to get up and get set. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. They'll look to throw. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Back to throw. Incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And this Browns defense stands tall. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a success. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Oh, Taylor going to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it. He loses it. Somehow, the ball finds its way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. False start, offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. He'll look to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. That's about as tough as they come. You're driving to try to put the ball in the end zone and tie the game, and that happens. It's exciting for us, wasn't it? Because we were thinking, hey, we might be headed towards overtime. Instead, it looks like this one may very well be done. And guess what? If you're a fantasy owner and you have that defense, you just had a big, big game, didn't you? Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Chargers in good field position to start out, first and 10. Back to it after the pick six, Rivers. 
And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Robert Ayers in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And now the spike with 36 seconds left to go. The Chargers on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and a mile. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And that is incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant you the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. First down, a run with high. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Four down, four down. Check. And they take a knee. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win. Needed one desperately. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where...